conferences this year in 2024, we've looked at the question and tried to answer, who am I? And to answer the question, we haven't looked inside and said, who do I think I am? Or how do I feel? Or something like that. Because that doesn't give us anything certain, anything sure, really anything good. We also haven't looked to our world to see what do they say about who I am. But we look to the one sure and certain thing that we know we can always count on, and that's the Lord's Word. That's the name He gives us in baptism. And so we've spent this year looking at that, and now as we look towards 2025, we look at something else that's new, and that's these promises and this Word of Jesus that we hear that He's making all things new. It's not, again, something we're doing or we're defining, but it's something He's giving, something He's saying and making. We love new things. New cars, new clothes, new phone, new computer. I like new stuff. But Jesus isn't talking about temporary things or something that you can achieve or something you can do. But he's talking about what he does for you. And so Jesus speaks about newness to John. And if you remember, John the apostle was exiled on this island called Patmos. He was suffering. And while he's there, he gets this vision and Jesus says, write it down. And so in Revelation 21 It says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them and they will be his people and God himself will be with them as their God. And he will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death will be no more. Neither shall there be mourning nor crying nor pain for the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. And he also said to John, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, it's done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And to the thirsty, I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. The one who conquers will have this heritage. And I will be his God and he will be my son. So John sees the one thing that we can know that is most true, most certain, most sure, and that's whatever God says and promises. Write this down, says Jesus. Don't forget it. Behold, or listen to this, I make all things new, or I am still making all things new. And then he says, it's done. It's completed. That should jar our memories to Jesus' words on the cross where he says, it's finished. It's accomplished. And so the all things new is all things. And remember that John's seeing a new heaven and a new earth. But you might be thinking already, when I look around in this world and I look at my life and I look at my friends and I look at my family, I do not think anything's new. It's the same old stuff over and over and over again. In fact, it feels to me like I'm like in a hamster wheel or something like that, or a treadmill, just constantly seeing the same stuff, same violence, same sin, same division, same hate in our world. And so we might be hearing these words of Jesus and saying, that doesn't seem true. That's not what I see when I look out at the world. However, we got to remember that faith isn't something we see with our natural eyes. Instead, 
Faith is something that we see through what we hear. In other words, we know that something's true and we trust it and we believe it, not because it looks that way. And there's lots of stuff we see that's this way in Christianity, right? For instance, when I see water and hear somebody say in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and put water on me or on somebody else, I might think, that's just water. But remember what the Catechism reminds us? It says that it's not just plain water that does these things. Water doesn't do it at all. But it's God's Word that takes up water. And God puts it to use. Because when He says something, when He promises something, He always does it. And so despite what you and I see in our world, Jesus says it's done. It's finished. It's as good as here now. And so while we wait to see what we hear be reality with our eyes, which will be when Jesus comes again or when we are with the Lord, we're reminded that everything that we think is true, as far as what we see, as far as how we even treat one another, isn't necessarily the way it is. It's easy for us to see this, though. Uh, Paul talks about this in the, his letter to the Corinthian church. And the Corinthian church were these people that sort of had a lot of groups or factions in them where one group said, I'm better than this guy, or we're better than this guy. And they even had different teachers that they were really into. And some of them were saying, I follow Paul, and I follow Apollos, and I follow Peter. And then the real spiritual people said, I follow Jesus. But there was all kinds of division. And so Paul writes this to them. He says, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh or to what we see with our eyes of flesh, even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh. We regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old's passed away, and behold, the new has come. And then he says, all of this is from God. It's not something we do. It's not something we manufacture. But it's a gift that God gives. And then he says, through Christ, he reconciled us to himself and gave all of us in the church the service or the ministry of reconciling one another. That is, in Christ, Paul says, God was reconciling the world to himself, and that's what this means. Because if you're like, what does this world word reconcile even mean? It means he wasn't counting their sins against them. He was forgiving their sins. That's what Jesus did. So we see, how does he make all things new? How does this happen when we see one thing and yet we experience something else? How is it done? Well, the cross. That's how it's done. It's done on Good Friday. It's done on Easter Sunday. It's done and finished. But now that gift that Jesus won, that making new, he doesn't just leave back there 2,000 years ago. But he brings it to you and to me. And he does it in a way so you and I can be certain that He is making us new, that we are new. And that is, He does it through a word spoken to you. He does it through telling you that your sins are forgiven and that you're clean because of His death for you. He does it when He puts His name on you in baptism and says, you are mine. You belong to me. He does it when He speaks and says, this is my body. This is my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of your sin. So again, you're not looking to something in here, but faith does this. It hears these words. It tastes and sees the Lord's good. And it hopes, not just in a way that says, well, I hope that's true, 
But from that faith, that hope is actually a reality. It's not a I hope and I wish, but it's I hope, meaning that it's true. And what's the true thing that we have? We have heaven. We have an eternity with God. We have that all the stuff you see that's wrong in the world, all the things that you've experienced, the things maybe that have been done to you, Jesus bore that pain in himself so that he could remove your sin and your shame, which is the sin that's been done to you too. And so all things new means that we have a certain true hope because of the words of the one who bore our sin on the cross. And because of this, you and I can regard one another, regard our brothers and sisters in the church, not as people were better than, not as people that we say, uh, you know, if, if only you were more like me. These aren't people we use and abuse, even though that does happen because we have sinners in the church, right? We still are in sinful flesh. But we regard one, one another as those who, along with us, are in Christ, have been given this gift, have been made new. And to be made new is to be clothed not with your own righteousness, but with the righteousness of the one who bore your sin. And so John says, he who was seated on the throne tells us, tells you, behold, I am making all things new. It's done in the name of Jesus. Amen.